so we had a comment recently after one of my videos where I mentioned the law of three and it dawned on me that that's not a, a commonly recognized law. I think I came up with it. I'm not convinced of that. I'm not convinced I've come up with anything if I'm honest, but um, we use it a lot on EPP. And if I'm honest, it's one of the main reasons that people lose investors. So the law of three applies to finance investors and to full market value investors. So investors that you're gonna do your TDIC sophisticated flips to. And the problem with many people when they are speaking to investors is they don't understand that a sale needs to progress at a certain pace in order to be successful. Can't go too fast. We've all probably had situations where we've, someone's tried to close us too quickly and no one likes that. No one likes, you know, to go for the jugular and to feel pressured, but equally we don't want to have our time wasted. And most partners who come to me and say, Frank, I've got a prospective investor, or he's got X amount of money to invest, or she wants to buy this many houses. And then when I touch base with them a week or two later, it's, it's not worked out, it's not gone forward. Most of the time it's because they haven't followed the law of three. So what is the law of three? Well, it's really, 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 really simple. The first three is if you're making a cold call. Now we don't make cold calls on EPP, but if someone was making a cold call, they get three seconds, three seconds to capture your attention. And if they capture your attention, you know, how many cold calls do you get? Not that many these days. I'd say maybe one in 20 actually said something that's interesting enough that I say, okay, go on then, tell me what you're selling. And that's giving permission for the next three. So three seconds on a cold call, we don't really use that one. 30 seconds. Now, if you meet someone in a social setting and they say, so Frank, what do you do? Or you say to them, you know, oh, nice to meet you. Where's your son, daughter, if it's a birthday party or something. What they're saying is when they say, so what do you do? They're actually saying in 30 seconds or less, tell me what you do. As in, I'm not that interested. If you start talking for five or 10 minutes, they're gonna say, nice to have met you and move on. So the first law of three is you get 30 seconds and you need to know what you're gonna say in that 30 second intro. And the objective is to make it interesting enough that if someone's in your target market, so for example, yesterday, I was at the boat show in Southampton. There's a lot of people there with a lot of money because they're looking at boats. Not all of them are looking to buy boats, but many of them are. And so in that setting, I'm going to have a 30 seconds in my head. If someone says, oh, so what do you do? Uh, for example, I was speaking to some uh, yacht brokerages, so yacht finance brokerages. So they've obviously got lots of money. I had a 30 seconds ready that basically qualified them as a finance investor. So, oh, I help people to get returns on their money 50 times more than they would in the bank while securing it on property with a first charge. That was my 30 seconds for yesterday. And I used that about 10 times because not that many people asked what I did, but I had quite a few quality conversations. Now, from that 30 seconds, I've just given you a 10 second part of it, I expand slightly on it. From that 30 seconds, if they then ask a question, and that's the objective, to qualify them, so if they don't ask a question, if they say, oh, that's nice, then you obviously say, so what do you do? And it moves on. We're not, we're not selling, you know, to, to everyone that we meet. But if they say, cool, that's interesting, so how do you do that? That's a buying sign. And what they're actually saying is, I'm now giving you permission to go on to the next rule of three. So three seconds, 30 seconds, three minutes. And so now you have three minutes to describe in a bit more detail what it is you actually do. So now you're gonna qualify them more, you're gonna give them some more meat on the bone. So for example, if I'm speaking to someone who I think is a prospective full market value investor, I'll say to them, yeah, we help people who haven't invested in property before to buy properties in a safe way without having to spend loads of their time. So what we do is we go and find the property, we negotiate it, we actually um, secure it, do the refurbishment, and then put tenants in it for our clients. So, you know, whatever they're doing, running their businesses or working 50 hours a week in their full-time job, they carry on doing that. And we just build them a nice little portfolio, maybe one property a year, one property every quarter, something like that, without them having to put any time or effort in. That's a very abbreviated three minutes and I might ask a question you know have you ever invested in property before so you can interspace it with a question or two but basically you've got three minutes to describe what you do and if they ask another question 
at the end of that, you don't carry on. And this is where people go wrong. They try and oversell in the first meeting. And I've, I've tried it every which way. I've, I've sold a lot of full market value properties to investors and I've sold a lot of, well, I've, I've gained a lot of finance from helping finance investors to invest with me. The key is at the end of the three minutes, if they say to you, that sounds interesting, so how would such and such work? Or what they're basically trying to work out is, do I fit in with it? So, you know, what's the risks? Or how do you get those kind of returns, etc. 50 times bank interest rate, by the way, is 5% return. It's not hard to do at the moment. And a first charge is easy if they're giving you enough money. So the key then is not to go into the next three. So you've had three seconds, 30 seconds, three minutes. You don't go into the 30 minutes. And if you're in a social setting, it's just too much. You're gonna get interrupted, you can't close. It's if you're familiar with the rapport curve, and we'll do that in another video if enough of you ask for it. The rapport curve describes how you need to spread out your sales process, how you need to interspace it with time so that you can do more touches. So you're not gonna take them from 30 seconds to 30 minutes in the first encounter. You're, well, you can do, but you're gonna lose the sale. So what you then do is you say, do you know what? Sounds like you're interested. Is it worth us having a coffee to talk about this? And that's the killer. If they say, do you know what? That would be good. You can pull your phones out, book a coffee in, and I'll, I'll go through how to book a coffee properly. There's a lots of there's lots of do's and don'ts. Again, pop a comment in the co in the um, comments below if you'd like me to talk you through the, the do's and don'ts of uh, booking a sales appointment at a coffee shop. That's the thing. So then you book that in, then you employ your touches in between and you have your 30 minute sales meeting to talk about the investing in a coffee shop. So you postpone that until seven to 10 days later. And there's a reason for that time frame. It's, it's important that you put a bit of time in. And that takes you to the 30 minutes. If it's a full time, if it's a full market value investor, you then at the end of that, you've given them an illustration. I'll happily talk that through in a different episode, how you show an illustration to a prospective investor. But then, and this is crucial, at the end of the 30 minutes, you say to them, at this stage, people generally know this isn't for them. And if it's not for you, that's absolutely cool. You'll, you'll know, you'll know by the questions they've asked, by how interested they've appeared, etc. If they spend 15 minutes talking about the kids and the football, and you spend five minutes talking about the product, you know, full market value investment, and then they go back to talking about football or kids or holidays, then you know they're not interested and that's cool. It's been a good investment of 30 minutes. If, however, when you say, so the next step is for us to spend a morning together to go and see two or three properties and then for us to run through the agreement and to and to get the ball rolling people generally know at this point whether they want to do that or not where are you sat and you can ask many closing questions but basically would you like to go ahead and book that in if they say no you've got a no and that's great you've only wasted 30 seconds three minutes and 30 minutes so what's that 33 and a half minutes and if they say yes you then book your three hour consultation and again we've got an agenda for that etc but at the end of that three hour consultation you are taking a two thousand pound deposit and an order for at least one full market value property. And so it's very, very simple, the law of threes. Three seconds, 30 seconds, three minutes, 30 minutes, three hours. And at the end of that, you've got an order that's, if you're doing a TDIC flip, gonna make you 20,000 pounds. If you've got questions, guys, pop them in the box, happily answer them. But the rule of threes really does work. Until next time, happy investing.